Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, hello, and happy new year. Happy 2018. And welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 232. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about what to do when you've fallen out of love with your business. Now, this is a topic that was inspired by Some recent posts that I've seen online, a couple of fairly well-known business owners who have decided to quit their business and find a job, one of whom did that several months ago and is happily seven months into a new job and was just formally quitting business and announcing it to people. So as we're going into a new year and we're setting New Year's resolutions or setting goals and planning business for the new year, Probably you've done that by now. If you haven't, now's a good time. I think it's important to stop and think and evaluate how we're feeling about business. Are you still in love with your business or have you fallen out of love with your business? This is also inspired by the fact that I haven't fallen out of love with my business, but I fell into a kind of subtle burnout towards the end of 2017. And it was really, really subtle. It was like, I didn't feel like creating stuff. I didn't feel like writing any of my books. I didn't feel like doing videos. Didn't feel like writing blog posts. I just was really tired of creating. It was like my creative juice had run out. And I went to the States for about three and a half weeks to see my family. And I thought, well, do minimal work stuff during that time. And when I come back, I'll be rested and refreshed and ready to get on with the rest of the year. And I wasn't. And I came back from the trip and really needed to catch up on some things. So I was doing that, but I just wasn't jazzed about the stuff that I had to do. And if you've listened to this podcast for the last year or seen any of my videos, you know that I've really fallen out of love with old school marketing. Not that I was ever necessarily in love with it, but I've just really been disappointed and annoyed and just tired of the whole online business world. And that's really, really confusing for me because I recognize the fact that I prefer doing business online and I prefer marketing online to having a brick and mortar business, which I have had in the past. But there's so many things about the online business coaching world that just really annoy me and I'm just tired of it and I'm tired of that crap. So without delving too much into that, it's just kind of an explanation of why I've been feeling like I need to reevaluate my business. And so I've been asking myself some questions about how I can revamp my business, keep doing what I'm doing because I love doing client calls, But I really have fallen into dislike (laughs) of all this stuff that comes with owning an online business. So I've just really fallen out of love with marketing my business. When I'm on the client calls, I love it and I love the way I work with clients, but I'm not in love with all the other stuff that comes with running a business. And I think part of that, like I said, is from that subtle burnout. So when I say subtle burnout, I wasn't burnt out in the sense of just totally exhausted, needing to sleep 12 hours a day. It was really subtle. And that's why it took me so long to figure out that that's what it was. So let's get into the topic. So what to do when you've fallen out of love with your business? 
So let's start by talking about why sometimes people fall out of love with business. So it could be burnout, like it was for me. So it could either be like subtle burnout or more intense burnout, where you've just been hustling, you've been putting all that energy into your business, you've had some really exhausting launches, whatever. The stress of running a business has led you to burnout. That's a possibility. Or maybe you're not quite doing what you love. We recently heard from Louisa Whitney in episode 231 who used to be a lawyer, and then she became a mediator because she wasn't really in love with being a lawyer as she thought she would, because that had been her dream for years. So maybe you're not doing exactly what you love. Maybe you're not getting the results from your business. Maybe you've been marketing like crazy, you've been hustling. I know I just used that word for the second time, and you know I hate that word. Maybe you've been really working hard, but you're not seeing the results in your business. You're not getting the amount of clients that you want, you're not getting a steady stream of clients, maybe you're still in feast or famine mode, that could be another reason why you've fallen out of love with your business. Or maybe you've just been pushing yourself too hard and not respecting the natural cycles and rhythms of your body and your energy. So you may have heard that I've talked about in the past how I try to plan my business around my monthly cycle, and that really works for me. So respecting those natural kind of ebbs and flows of energy throughout the month has really been useful in helping me manage my energy and be more respectful of myself when I'm in low energy. Because when I am in those low energy periods, if I take care of myself, then that means I've got extra energy to get tons of stuff done during the weeks when I'm naturally more focused. So maybe you've not been respecting your natural cycles. And that's led to falling out of love with your business because you just don't have the energy to do it anymore. So for whatever reason, if you're feeling like, oh, my business, I don't know what to do with it. Do I quit? Do I get a job? Do I try a new business? Like, what do I do? I'm not in love with my business anymore and I'm sick of it. If you're feeling that way, let's talk about some questions, like what can you do? Some questions that you need to ask yourself. So I think that with any situation like this, it's really useful for you to stop and evaluate the situation so that you can get more clarity on what it is that you're experiencing. So one question you can ask yourself is, what do you love doing? And that's in your business, outside of your business, just in life in general. What do you love doing? So for me, it's I love this podcast. I love doing client calls. I love walking. So you probably know by now that I do a fair amount of walking when I'm not in the office. I've been doing the Walk a Thousand Miles Challenge in 2017. I am doing it again in 2018. I've written three books on walking long distance trails. I love walking. So these are things to pay attention to. What kinds of things do you enjoy both in your business and outside of your business? Question number two, what do you dislike doing? What are you just sick of? What do you cringe at the thought of doing? What do you procrastinate? What do you put off doing? What are you tired of doing, both in business and life? And for me, that's the online marketing stuff. I'm really displeased with the online marketing world and I still haven't found a way forward that's different. So what do I dislike doing? Marketing, which is really disappointing to me because I've always really loved marketing. So take a look at what you dislike doing both in life and in business. Question number three, why do you want a business? And this is really important because not everyone is cut out to have a business and to run a business. Not everyone wants to have a business. But in this online business world, we've really been fed the dream that the way to get the lifestyle you want is to have an online business. So stop and think, do you really want a business and why? Now, for me, this is an obvious thing because I've been in business. I've been self-employed since 1999. I really can't go back to working for someone else because I just do not like working for someone else. Back in 2012... So after I trained as a coach, but before the business was really up and running and working, it was a four-month contract position, basically a job where I was working in an office and I did not do well in that environment. So that just confirmed to me the fact that I really cannot 
work for other people after 18 years of working on my own. I absolutely need to be able to set my own terms, my own hours, my own everything. I need to do things the way I want to do them. So being in business is not negotiable for me. I really cannot imagine having a job and working for someone else. Can't even imagine working outside of the home. So evaluate for you. Do you want a business and why? Question number four, if you are dissatisfied with your business, if you've fallen out of love with your business, why are you so dissatisfied with your business? What's wrong with it? And again, for me, it's the marketing side of business. Like I love the client calls. I love the time when I'm on the calls with people. I just don't love the stuff that goes around it. So ask yourself that question. Why are you dissatisfied with your business? Why have you fallen out of love with your business? Question number five, how can you do more of what you love? How can you integrate this into your business? So for me, the things that I love were this podcast, doing client calls, and walking. So the podcast, as I said in the last episode, which if you haven't listened to it, I will repeat myself, changing up the format again on the podcast. And that's something that I've done over the last four and a half years that I've been doing the podcast. So I'm not doing interviews for 2018. That's the plan. I'm doing two episodes a month of solo episodes. I'm doing one co-hosted episode with Joe Casey a month, as I have been. And the new thing that's replacing the interviews is I'm going to have quarterly co-hosts. So I will have a special business person from the online business world to join me in the same way that I've been doing co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. I'm going to be doing them with this new co-host, which will be joining me quarterly. So that'll be three episodes with each person, four people in the year. So I'm looking forward to that, and I look forward to hearing your feedback on that. But that sounds really fun to me because I've really enjoyed the co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey because I feel like we can dig deeper into the topics than I often can when I'm doing an interview because sometimes I do interviews with people that I'm new to speaking with and it's kind of hard to go deep sometimes. So this is an experiment as always, and I hope you find it interesting and useful. With client calls, I'm just going to keep going the way I'm doing with that because like I said, I love my clients. I love the client calls. Everything's going well with that. So walking, how can I do more of what I love in terms of walking and how can I integrate this into my business? Well, it probably wasn't last year. It was the year before. So it was 2016 when I released my first walking book. I set up a website called shewalksinnature.com and I posted there that I was offering transformational walks for women. And the idea was either to do kind of coaching walks or to just help women do their first long distance walk. And I put it up there, didn't market it. And as you can imagine, nothing's come of that. So I had a lot of people express interest, but nothing's actually happened. So for 2018, I want to focus more on that and focus more on bringing these walking experiences and bringing more of the outdoors into my work with people. And I still don't know what that's going to look like, aside from the transformational walks that I've put up on my She Walks in Nature website. I expect to get more clarity in the coming weeks around that, but it's very clear to me that I need to bring more of the outdoors into my business. So bringing this back to you, How can you do more of what you love? How can you integrate this into your business? Some other things for you to explore. Are you in any way out of integrity with your business? Is there any part of your business which just doesn't feel right for you? Maybe it feels off, something's out of integrity. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and listen to episode 229 of the podcast where Joe Casey and I talk about how to operate your business from a place of integrity. And of course, That means a different thing to every individual person. So that's going to be different for you than it is for me. Another question for you to ask. So that's question six. Question seven. Do you need to reinforce any boundaries or do you need to set any new boundaries? And in episode 225 of the podcast, Joe Casey and I talk about setting and upholding boundaries in business. And a lot of people found that useful. I think boundaries are something that are a big issue for a lot of entrepreneurs. So if you feel like you're having issues with your boundaries, take a look at that episode again and see what you can do about your own business boundaries. Next question, number eight. What about time management? Is there anything that you need to do to improve your time management skills? And if you suspect that might be the case, 
go back and check episode 222 with Amber de la Garza, where we talk about time management techniques. And if you feel like time management is a really big issue for you, sign up for Amber's own podcast, which is the Productivity Straight Talk with Amber de la Garza podcast. Do check that out. It's really, really good. She's got really practical tips that can help you with time management. Finally, question number nine, do you need support? Maybe there's some area of your business where you just need to hire out and get someone to help you. And that can be less expensive than you think. So get in touch with other entrepreneurs to get recommendations for people that can help you, support you in your business. But if certain areas of your business are really feeling heavy, sometimes it's because you just need to get support in that area. And it could be as simple as freeing up your time to do the things you need to do to get more clients, and then that makes it easy for you to get the money you need to pay for that person. So ask yourself if there are certain areas where you need support in your business, and that could be in marketing, could be an admin, it could be bookkeeping, it could be helping you with content. Where might you need support in your business? So once you've answered these questions, and I really recommend that you spend some time journaling on this, really getting clear on these answers. What can you do instead? So what can you do next? First of all, reconnect with what you love. So I'm continuing the podcast because I love it, continuing with client calls because I love them, and I'm planning to spend more time outdoors this year. Like I said, I've signed up for the 2018 Walk a Thousand Miles Challenge again, because that really did ensure that I get outdoors to do some walking on the days when I wasn't necessarily feeling like it. So I do know that that helped me stretch and really meet my goal for walking. And I plan to do more long distance walks this year. So I plan to do more of the stuff that I love in terms of walking and again, adding that to my business. And I think the more time I spend outdoors and the more walking I do, that's going to help me learn how I need to integrate that into my business. So reconnect with what you love, even if that thing that you love is not related to your business. Whatever it is, do more of that. Find a way to fit that into your schedule and see if that helps you rekindle your love and your business because that might actually help by doing more of the things that you love. That might help you see how you can bring more of that into your business or how to bring more play, more fun, more joy into your business. Finally. Think about whether you need to pivot in some way in your business. So as we talked about with Luisa on episode 231, and she was talking about basically pivoting in her business from being a lawyer to being a mediator. So she's helping the same group of people, but in a different way. And do check out that episode because she's got a great story that I think is really useful. You can tweak your business in a little way that helps you to either help the same people, but in a different way, or help a new group of people in the same way, or add a new product or service to your business, or operate your business from a slightly different perspective. And you may have seen me recommending a book called The Pivot Map, which was written by R.M. Harrison, who is a guest on this podcast back on episode 143. So R.M. Harrison wrote this book called The Pivot Map, which helps you get clear on how you can pivot in your business. It's a short book. It probably take you about an hour and a half to read, and it's really actionable. It comes with some free downloadable worksheets that you can use to figure out how to pivot in your business. So I really, really recommend that book. I know I said finally when I mentioned pivoting, but really, it all comes down to mindset. So finally, look at how to get the mindset you need to fall back in love with your business. Like, what do you need to believe about your business? What do you need to believe about you as a business owner? What fears, what blocks, what limiting beliefs, what mind crap might be getting in the way of you having the business of your dreams, of you having a business that you love? What is the mindset that you need to have a business that you love? What is the mindset that you need to really just feel great joy in your business? What do you need to believe in order to be in love with your business? Write this stuff down. And once you've got this vision of what your ideal business looks like, 
What do you need to believe in order to make that happen? What do you need to believe in order to make that a reality? So I talked earlier about integrating more of what you love into your business. What are the beliefs that come up when I say that? What are the fears that come up? What are the blocks that come up? So if I say you can integrate more of what you love into your business, what are the buts that come up that you think, yeah, but no one's going to pay me for that. Yeah, but I don't have time for that. Yeah, but I'm not good enough for that. What comes up? What are the limiting beliefs that come up when you think about integrating more of what you love into your business? What are the limiting beliefs that come up when you think about pivoting into doing something slightly different with your business? And what do you believe about your ability to have a successful business that you love without burnout? Do you believe that's even possible? Write this stuff down. I know I always say this, but part of making mindset work a habit, which is what I talked about last year in episode 230, is that you've really got to write this stuff down. It's not enough to just listen to this podcast or other podcasts and think, oh yeah, that was interesting. Write this stuff down. I ask you questions because I'm trying to help you dig up your mind crap and bring it to the surface so that you can do something about it. It's not just, this is really fascinating stuff to explore. We're exploring it so we can do something about it. So once you've kind of dredged all this stuff up and brought it up into the light and you've written it down so you can see it and you don't lose it, because it's really easy for this stuff to slip out of your conscious mind. Once you've got it all written down and recorded, do something about it. So again, that goes back to shifting beliefs yourself, shifting beliefs with someone else, getting help from someone else with that and then taking the actions you need to take to make this a reality. So to summarize, ask yourself those questions that I mentioned in the beginning of this episode. There were nine of them. I will add them in the show notes so you can look at them and more easily answer them. But ask yourself those questions. Reconnect with what you love. Spend more time doing what you love. See if you can add more of that to your business. Think about how you can pivot in your business to do something differently and do the mindset work. Get clear on the beliefs that you need to have and the mindset that you need to have in order to create a business that you love. And then do the work to change those beliefs either with yourself or with someone else and take action. Even if it's just baby steps, take action towards creating this business that you love. That's all for now. I hope you found this useful. I'm realizing that perhaps this might have been a good topic for the end of 2017, but I do know that a lot of people wait until the new year to actually start planning things and thinking about things. So here you go. I hope you found this interesting and useful. I hope the timing was good. And please drop me a line and let me know what you thought of this week's episode. You can, as always, email me at holly at hollywharton.com. Or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and get in touch there. I would love to give you a shout out on the show if you send me your comments. I would also love for you to join me in my private Facebook group, Business Mindset Alchemists, so we can continue the conversation there. As I always say, podcasting is such a one-way conversation, and I would love to get some feedback from you in the group. Business Mindset Alchemists is dedicated to exploring business mindset and how you can get the mindset you need to build the business that you want. I would love to see you in there. Just go to hollywharton.com forward slash group and you will be redirected to the Facebook group. Finally, whether you've been listening to the show for a while or whether you've just heard your first episode, if you're drawn to learning more about mindset work and you'd like to learn more about how you can work with me, please get in touch or head over to hollywharton.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L, and you can book in a call with me to learn more. I would love to work with you and help you transform your mindset using heart-centered energy work. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 232 for the show notes on this episode. And tune in next week for episode 233, which is another co-hosted episode with Joe Casey, where we talk about transparency. We talk about what is transparency and how it shows up in business, why transparency is important in business, what lack of transparency looks like in the business world, 
how you can be more transparent in business and how to know when you're being transparent and when you're not. We talk about some really practical real life examples that we've experienced and what we think about lack of transparency in business. So I really hope you find that one useful. Remember to tune in next week. Thank you so much and have a lovely day and a fabulous 2018. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.